Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome to my Pro Tools How To video series. This video is on effects setups. We will go through several different types of effects setups from mono in, mono out, mono in, stereo out, and stereo in, stereo out. Again, during the course of the video, you will see my keystrokes displayed at the bottom of the screen. And here is a key to the guide for the symbols that you will see. You can use shift to select tracks in a range. You can use the command to take tracks in and out of a selection or on its own to select non-contiguous tracks, or you can use the option key to select all or deselect all. Okay, first a quick little demonstration of the selection techniques. I can click and shift click to select all tracks in between, and I can use command on a Mac and select or deselect tracks from my selection. If I hold down option, I will either select all or deselect all. I can use command again to select non-contiguous tracks to add to or subtract from my selection. And again, option selects all or deselects all tracks. Okay, now we're going to set up the mix window view. So what you're seeing on your screen is similar to what is on my screen. So pause the video as needed to make sure that you are showing what I am showing here. And next, two important shortcuts for do to all and do to selected. Okay, the individual tracks you're about to hear have not been processed individually, and the effects have not been fine-tuned for those tracks. They're just for demonstration. So here are the steps I'm about to take to set up the mono in, mono out reverb. So the first thing we're going to do is select the tracks that we want to send, in this case just one, and then we're going to choose new track from the send. We're going to choose a mono aux input track and we're going to name it appropriately and then click on create. Generally speaking, effects sends should be set to post fader so that the effects level changes with the level changes of the instrument. When loading a plugin, we will look for one with mono in parentheses after its name, which indicates it is mono in and mono out. And for demonstration purposes, I'm choosing just a generic preset. So going to the aux input track, we will choose the Revive Mono, and we will load a preset, an acoustic guitar plate. My personal preference is to solo isolate the effects return so that we can solo the guitar and hear both the guitar and its effect. So we'll turn up the send. So we send a little bit of that acoustic guitar to the reverb. Okay, one use of a mono in, mono out reverb is to be able to wrap the effect around the placement of the instrument. So we'll try that. So we pan the location of the reverb to where the acoustic guitar is panned. Another option is to pan the reverb to a different location than where the instrument itself is panned. This creates an unnatural acoustic environment, uh, which we generally wouldn't want on an acoustic guitar like this one, uh, but can be a cool effect at times. I'm just muting the effects so you can hear it with and without. Next, we'll set up a mono in stereo out effect on the lead vocal. The process will be very similar to the previous, except we will choose a different plugin type, which you'll see. So we'll go to the lead vocal, we'll go to the send, and we will select new track. The width will be set to mono because it's about and should match the input, and we will name it appropriately. Again, we will hit create, and then our aux appears. We'll move the send out of the way. And next we will put a plugin on the aux input track and we'll be looking for a plugin that has mono slash stereo in parentheses after its name. This will accept a mono input and output a stereo signal. For this demo, I'm loading up a mod delay and loading up a quick slap with a little bit of different groove for the left and right to create a kind of stereo effect going. So again, just for demo purposes, here we go. Walking away, I know what you'll say, but it's so better off this way. I'll write a better ending. It's time to stop pretending. So I'm walking away, and no, I can't stay. Now we will create a stereo in, stereo out effect setup, which we might use to set up a more realistic reverb environment. 
So first we will select all the tracks that we want to send to this reverb. So click, shift, click. And now we will go to the send and like before, choose new track. This time we're gonna choose stereo for the width and name the track appropriately. And of course, hit create. And our aux appears. We will move it to the end of the drums for right now anyway. This time we will choose a plugin that has stereo in parentheses after its name, which should be your only option unless you have some surround plugins. For this demo, I'm choosing the Oxford Reverb. Great reverb, and I'm gonna load up the drum room preset. So here we go, multi-channel reverb, Oxford. There we go. Let's rearrange some things here. Let's expand the send. Let's get everything so we can view it here. Close the send this out of the way. Let's load the preset. So go to room, drum room. I'm going to use the copy to send feature to copy my pan locations up to that send. I could also set each send to follow main pan, which is the FMP button in the send. So we're going to go to automation, copy to send, and unselect volume and select pan and choose the send that we want to copy up to and click OK. And you can see my pan locations got copied up there to the send. So they match. The benefit of the send return method is that we can send only the instruments that we want to send to the reverb and we can send them in the amounts that we want. So we want a lot of kick in our mix, but we don't want a lot of reverb on the kick, for example. And we can do that with the sends as you see here.